If you're a DM who's looking to run an official published adventure for 5th edition, or you just want to get more up to date with the primary campaign setting of Dungeons Dragons 5th edition, this video is for you, because in this video I'm going to talk about the Forgotten Realms, and I'm going to give you a primer of sorts, not a deep dive, but a brief abbreviated explanation of what the Forgotten Realms is and basically the most important things you need to know before running an adventure or a campaign set in the Forgotten Realms. First off, my name is Jay Evela with Eventure Games and we are a publisher of DMs resources for official published 5e adventures over at the DMs Guild and that also means that we have played through and read through almost all of the official published 5e adventures, many of which of course take place in the Forgotten Realms. In addition to that, I'm also a huge fantasy nerd who has read more than a hundred novels placed in the Forgotten Realms, which means that I have a lot of useless but also sometimes useful knowledge that I would like to pass along to you if you are someone who's looking to just get a bit more familiar with the Forgotten Realms. But yeah, without further ado, let's jump into this Forgotten Realms primer. The Forgotten Realms was created back in the 60s by Ed Greenwood and quickly became a stable setting in Dungeons & Dragons, the tabletop role-playing game. Eventually, the Forgotten Realms became the primary setting of Dungeons & Dragons. Now, the Forgotten Realms has received some critique for being a bit vanilla, and that's not entirely unfair because Forgotten Realms is quite inspired by especially Tolkien's Middle-earth and has a lot of the same themes and components and a very familiar feel. To me, that is also the strength of the campaign setting because the Forgotten Realms is so familiar, it's easily accessible for anyone who just knows a bit about fantasy, and it's also generic enough that you can place virtually any campaign or adventure within the setting, but even so, it has a rich lore, it has various different cultures, locations, geographies, and stuff like that. So if you are interested in going deeper into the Forgotten Realms, you can easily do so, and there is a lot of source material to draw on. But if you just want to have a campaign setting where you can read up on a bit of stuff and then run any adventure you really want, the Forgotten Realms is also a very, very easy place to do that. And that's also because the Forgotten Realms doesn't have an overarching theme or flavor that overpowers everything else. It's not a post-apocalyptic world or a world where the gods walk among men. It's just the kind of fantasy that everyone can really relate to. First off, it's important to know the name of the primary world sort of the Forgotten Realms Earth, and that is Abir Toril, or just Toril, depending on when in the world's history you are, and so on. So Toril is basically a planet, just like Earth, it's about similar size, it has similar geography and cultures, it has various different continents, but there is one continent that we need to note more than all of the others, and that is of course Faerun, because Faerun is the primary continent of the Forgotten Realms, in the sense that it's the only continent that we really get to explore in a lot of the official published content. You can basically run adventures and campaigns in the Forgotten Realms on the planet of Toril in the continent of Faerun without knowing anything about any of the other continents, so I'm not really gonna go into those at all. Now Faerun is a very large continent and there are various different geographies, locations, species, races, cultures, all that stuff in Faerun, but the region that we have mostly focused on in 5th edition is the Salt Coast. That is the western part of Faerun, and it stretches something like 2,000 or 1,500 miles from north to south, and it encompasses various different geographies, climates, locations. You have frozen mountains in the north, you have more tropical climate in the south, and you have some barren wastelands and even deserts when you get a bit more inland. The Salt Coast can feel very familiar because it is in many ways quite similar to Tolkien's Middle Earth in the way that it's sort of a Western European medieval feel and then just a whole lot more magical and with new races and stuff included. Basically the Salt Coast doesn't have a central authority or central political entity. It's a bunch of city-states or proto-nations. Even though there's no central authority or empire that's taking over everything, there's no real major conflicts going on between these city-states or nation-states, at least not very often. So it's sort of a peaceful, civilized feel where you can travel down mainly or mostly safe roads. Most of the conflicts that do happen on the Salt Coast are typically between this evil race that has just entered the fray or maybe an evil wizard has summoned some horror or demons are coming in over here. Beyond the Salt Coast and Faerun and even Toril, the planet, there is of course a whole multiverse of planes of existence because the Forgotten Realms adheres to the same cosmology as the Dungeons and Dragons books generally does, where you have several planes of existence that overlap, with the prime material plane of course being home to Toru. These planes of existence are stuff like the Nine Hells, or the Seven Heavens of Celestia, or the Abyss, or even stuff like 
the Shadowfell or the Feywild. You may have heard or seen some of these concepts mentioned in the official published adventures if you've read through any of those, or you may have seen it in stuff like Stranger Things where there is this upside down alternate reality and that is a very very similar thing to the Shadowfell we find in Forgotten Realms and in D&D in general. So these other planes of existence are basically physical places that the characters can go and which powerful wizards or some types of monsters often can travel between. So it's not unheard of that creatures will go to the Nine Hills to complete some sort of mission or that you may need to go to Celestia to beseech a god for help directly, stuff like that. Speaking of gods, that moves us to religion, which of course is also a very key component of the Forgotten Realms. Because if there's one place where the Forgotten Realms is very much not Western Europe in a medieval time, it is in terms of religion, because there is no monotheistic religion that controls everything. Instead, there is a pantheon of different deities, and there's really no atheists either on Faerun or in Faerun at least, because it's very clear that the gods do exist. Gods grant powers to clerics and priests, druids, paladins, stuff like that. They draw their power directly from the deity they worship, and that of course makes it very easy to believe in the gods. Deities can also show themselves in visions, or answer prayers, or even manifest physically, or through an avatar on the material plane. And that of course doesn't prevent some people from hating the gods, or believing that they're not gods in the way that they say they are, stuff like that. Now we've talked a bit about divine magic, which of course draws power from the deities in the Forgotten Realms, and then there's of course also arcane magic. These two concepts, divine and arcane magic, used to be split up in early editions, and as far as we've seen from 1 D&D, this next iteration of Dungeons & Dragons, it may be split up again. In 5th edition, there's no real distinction between arcane and divine magic, but there is very much that distinction in the Forgotten Realms and all of the novels and stuff we've gotten in the Forgotten Realms. So where divine magic is priests, druids, and all that stuff, arcane magic is wizards, sorcerers, bards, and everyone who more sort of practices a craft rather than worship someone to get their powers. Arcane magic in the Forgotten Realms is centered around the weave of magic, which is sort of this tapestry of magical strands that envelops everything, and which arcanist people who create arcane magic can manipulate to cast spells, or even travel through space and time and all that stuff. The weave of magic is overseen by the goddess Mystra, who is the goddess of magic, obviously, and quite a few of the most catastrophic events we've had in the history of the Forgotten Realms is due to someone manipulating or destroying or disraveling the Weave of Magic in some unintended way. Throughout the various editions of Dungeons & Dragons and the various iterations of the Forgotten Realms we've received, it's a bit hard to pin down exactly how common or uncommon magic is supposed to be. We do know that probably everyone, even the most simple of peasants will realize that magic does exist and will have heard of someone casting a fireball or a magic sword that can sever the neck of any creature it strikes, stuff like that, because magic is not unheard of. It's not in the way that we see it in Westeros or even in Middle Earth, for example, where magic is so rare that as soon as anyone sees magic use, they are really, really surprised. And even though 50 Distance says that magic is quite rare, or magic items at least are quite rare, there's no mistaking that in the published adventures we've seen, there are a lot of practitioners of magic, there are a lot of priests and druids and clerics and wizards and souls and so on, and magic items are also not that uncommon. Finally, I also want to talk about the races and creatures you can find in the Forgotten Realms. Again, here draws inspiration from classic fantasy, so the dominant race is humans, of course, and then you have elves, dwarves, and halflings, which are less common, but still quite common among the civilized races. Now, the Forgotten Realms also adds in gnomes, dragonborn, tiefling, and races such as these, and they have some offshoot races such as the Dark Elves, which have been classically an evil race in the Forgotten Realms. And then there are of course more monstrous races such as goblins, orcs, ogres. Now it used to be that the Forgotten Realms was quite black and white, where all Dark Elves, all goblins, all orcs were evil, and it would be very uncommon to see them in civilized society, and a lot of people would meet them with discrimination basically, and refuse to do business with them, or talk to them, or even try to hunt them out of town and what have you. In these more modern times and even throughout the brief history of 5th edition, these monstrous races or classically evil races are much less evil, so now it's not uncommon necessarily to see an orc barkeep or a dark elf shopkeeper or what have you. So just to sum things up, The Forgotten Realms is a campaign setting that mainly focuses on the world of Toril, the continent of Faerun and the 
region of the Sword Coast, at least in newer editions of Dungeons Dragons. And it has a vast cosmology and multiverse of different planes of existence that range from heaven and hell to shadow realms or nature realms and what have you. And it has a vast pantheon of deities that reside in these otherworldly realms, these other planes of existence, and bestow their worshippers, clerics, priests, and paladins with magical benefits and spells they can cast. There is a weave of magic that encompasses the entirety of Faerun and other worlds in the Forgotten Realms campaign setting, and which is used by arcane practitioners to cast spells and manipulate the strains of magic. Magic itself is fairly common, but can vary from region to region, and also, of course, from edition to edition of Dungeons and Dragons. As far as races and monsters go, it's quite similar to Middle Earth, with humans, elves, halflings, dwarves, and then gnomes and dragonborns, tieflings, stuff like that. And also, of course, the evil goblinoids or less evil goblinoids and various other offshoots. Dragons are there, a lot of different mythical dangerous creatures are there. So that's my primer on the Forgotten Realms, a bit of a lore dump that will help you run your first adventure or campaign in the Forgotten Realms, or maybe just get a bit of a better understanding on how the Forgotten Realms function. I would personally love to make more videos about the Forgotten Realms where we dive a bit deeper into some of this stuff, including the Forgotten Realms history. So if that's something you'd like to see, please let me know in the comments down below, and don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. You can also become a patron over at patreon.com eventure, where you'll not only get cool 5e encounters and other stuff you can use in your games, but also get to help decide which videos and articles we make. Now that we're on that topic, I want to say a huge thank you to all our legend tier patrons who more than anyone helps us keep this channel afloat. Beyond that, there's not a whole lot left to say except thank you so much for watching and I hope that I'll see you in the next video.